Hello everyone, Jackie Edwards here. Thank you for joining me today. Today we are talking about quitting your job when you are starting a new business or getting into property investing or especially getting into rent to rent, which is my specialty. So this is a very, very common question again for anybody across a number of different businesses and you know, you're making this big life change and you're like, oh, you know, I really hate my job. I can't wait to get out of it. And it's taking so much of my concentration. I just can't focus on, you know, my new side business. So I'll just quit my old job because I know I can make my new business work if I don't have to worry about going to my old job and spending all my time and my brain power there. It's okay, I will quit and then I will make this new thing work. I want to urge caution when you do this. So first of all, if you are interested in property investing, if you're looking to be able to buy properties with mortgages, quitting your job is generally not the best way to go about it. So when you're getting a mortgage or you know if you're trying to get loans or whatever you're trying to do to kind of raise finance for your business, for your investing, they're going to be looking at your income. Most property investors have like self-employed income. Or if you're like me and you work through a limited company, you pay yourself the minimum that you can to keep your taxes low. So your salary isn't very high. Or you're self-employed and for the first three years, most lenders won't really even consider you because you haven't like to have a track record of being self-employed. So if you've just quit your job, you're gonna struggle to get a mortgage for a property. So as a property investor, probably not the best thing to do to quit your job. It will really, really impact your lending um, ability. All right, if you're doing rent to rent, it's a slightly different story because you don't need to get a mortgage to do rent to rent. Um, you know, your joint venture partners, like we talked about in the last video, they, they're probably not going to be saying, oh, you know, are you employed? Let me look at your salary and your pay slips and make sure blah, 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 because you've spent the time building the relationship with them. And that's why you go for private lending versus bank lending, because banks will say, what's your employment? Let's tick all the boxes. Private lending, when you're building that relationship with that person, it's a bit more flexible. So you could consider leaving your job if you want to start your rent to rent business and you don't think you can do both at the same time. But again, consider in the future. So if rent to rent is kind of like it was for me, your stage one plan, and you're gonna do rent to rent for a year, get that cash flow sorted, and then move on to buying properties, again, you're gonna get stuck at the mortgage because you haven't got three years of self-employed income. So you're gonna to struggle to get a mortgage. So really, really consider all of the pros and cons around quitting and staying in your job. Another thing that I find is if you've got more time, so now you've quit your job, you've got all this time for your side business, gonna make it your main business, you find ways to fill that time that you really could have done in half or a quarter of the time. You know, you start looking at right move and you're just looking at all these properties and all of a sudden, you know, two hours has gone by and you haven't really done anything. Whereas when you're working full time and you're trying to build your business, you don't have that much time. So you're really, really super specific and focused in those few hours that you do have a week. So I recommend if, as long as you've got at least 10 hours a week, you're gonna be able to build your property business on side, alongside of your kind of full-time day job. You'll be super specific and focused. So you'll be like, all right, I've got an hour every evening to do the work after the kids go to bed, after I get home from work, and before I go to bed. So I've got this hour, I need to be super specific. Here's exactly what I'm gonna do in that hour. And you will get a lot more done. Other, If you're not saying, oh, well, you know, I've got all day today, so I'll just poodle about and do these couple bits and pieces here. And then all of a sudden it's eight o'clock at night and you're in the same situation and you've got an hour to do your, your property business. So make sure that you really understand what's going to happen when you leave your job. You also won't have that income to fall back on. And sometimes it's nice to have that cash coming in. So you don't need to be all stressed out because when you're going to meet with you know landlords or people's agents selling properties and that type of thing, 
and you're inside thinking, oh my God, I don't have any money. I don't have any paychecks coming. I'm really desperate. I really need this property. And then all that desperation is just like pouring off of you. That's not gonna, that, that, that other person is gonna tell. They're gonna feel those negative vibes and that desperation. And that, you know, landlord is gonna be like, mm, this person doesn't feel quite right. Or that agent, you know, selling the property is gonna be like, mm, the person doesn't feel quite right. And they're gonna pick somebody else over you because they, they're gonna get that vibe. It's true, it happens. I have the same thing happen to me when I do viewings for tenants because I instantly turn into like desperation mode. I'm like, oh my God, I gotta fill this room. Desperate, desperate, desperate. I need this tenant, please, please move in. And they're like running a mile which is why I have somebody else do my viewings for me with tenants because I am not the person to do that. So you need to make sure you're in a place where you truly are comfortable, that you don't need any extra money coming in, that you've got space to build your business so that every time you meet a landlord or an owner or an agent, you aren't desperate, you aren't worried, you don't have to make it work in order to feed your family. So be very, basically my advice is to be very, very cautious about quitting your job when you get started. You can quit your job down the line once things are up and running. Again, you need to make sure you're gonna, it's gonna work for your mortgage ability. So keep those things in mind. Now for me, I, I was able to quit very early on in my property investing journey. So I got started in rent to rent and I quit my day job. I was already self-employed and I'm foreign, so nobody was gonna give me a mortgage anyways. So me not having a regular job wasn't really going to matter. It didn't impact any of those things. Now, I also had my boyfriend, my partner at the time, who was able to get mortgages. So he had a normal job. He you know, could show all the credit worthiness and like the long-term job. So he would be able to apply for the mortgages. So if you've got somebody else in your life, you know, a, a spouse, a partner, you know, a family member, a joint venture partner, that's happy to, you know, be your mortgage holder, a mortgage host and have the mortgages and, you know, raise any finance that needs credit referencing or jobs, then maybe that's a great partnership and you don't need to have your job. So it will depend on your personal situation, but make sure you're looking at all sides of it, all the pros and the cons of leaving your job. Because in the beginning, it can sound absolutely amazing. And that's what happened to me. It sounded great. I'm like, screw this accounting stuff. I'm getting rid of it. I don't need to do it anymore. I was like, I've got enough cash to you know, get me through a year so I won't be super desperate. Everything's going to be fine. But what I found the problem was for me is all of a sudden I had all this time. And I still wasn't getting very much done in the beginning. I was off saying, oh, well, I'll just do these couple of bits and oh, it's so nice not to have to go to work today. I'll sleep in or, or, or I would start getting up really early and still not actually accomplishing anything because I knew I had all day. So I'd faff about on Facebook and email and, you know, doing all the, the busy work that I think we get so used to doing in our kind of normal corporate day jobs or our normal day jobs where, you know, we've got to do this busy work so that we look like we're working and that we look like we're busy. And you can't do that in your own business. Well, you can, but nothing really gets accomplished. So that happened to me and it had to really pull myself back and set up some really strict structure within my day in order to make sure I actually got things accomplished and I was doing the right things that were gonna move my business forward, not just doing all the busy work that looked like I was doing things. So hopefully you found that helpful. If you did, give this a like, give it a share with anybody that you think might need to hear this message and make sure you come back next week for the next video. I will see you soon.